Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a freeware aircraft add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator that's been around now for a few months already but has now received a mega version 2 update uh, which you can download from flightsim.to. The links for it are in the description below and uh, it is the Kuro Boeing 787-8 which you can see here at London Gatwick today. A number of different liveries included within the version 2 package and uh, it encompasses and uses a lot of the really exciting things that have been incorporated within AAU2 massively improving both the 747-8 and the 787-10 in the sim for which this is based. So we're going to have a little look, I'm going to share my thoughts with you guys so hit like and subscribe and I'm also curious to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Now the Kuro 787-8 is um, based upon the 787-10. They've changed the model, incorporated this really nice uh, Dash 8 model for the Dreamliner and made a number of tweaks to the flight model as well. You'll notice the sound, so we've actually got the FT Sim Plus Payware sound pack installed into this which is really easy to do and the Kuro installer makes it effortless as well in incorporating these sound packs into your installation. Now we've configured for a flight to Kos, uh, a wonderful TUI route with a challenging approach towards the end as well, or a Dreamliner most certainly. And uh, I've been tweaking and having a little look around various parts of the aircraft. First and foremost, as we taxi towards the hold point here at London Gatwick, runway 26 left, uh, I've been having a good explore of the FMS and the various systems on board the aircraft, and I am mightily impressed with um, how effortless it all seems to be as well. This is without any heavy division mods. In fact, at the moment, they tell you to make sure that it is uninstalled. A lot of the overhead panel works really nicely, APU. Uh, fuel pumps, everything as required. No uh, kind of concerns there that, that really stand out to me. The magic, of course, in the FMS. Currently, though, uh, we don't have SimBrief integration. We're hoping that will come in the future. So you do find that you're manually having to input your routes, your weights, your balance into the FMS as you prepare for your journeys, uh, however long and short they may be. As it stands at the moment, you need to use the MSFS InSim Fuel Weight and Balance tab to get the correct fuel loading and uh, payload loading on the aeroplane as well. Really important you get that set up correctly and take those values um, and compare them against the FMS because in the performance page just here uh, you get the opportunity to add in your zero fuel weight. Now if you press and hold that and release it for a few seconds it will get a figure down at the bottom here in this scratch pad and it will allow you to then input the figure directly into your zero fuel weight here um, which does help, it saves a bit of time. First limitation and takeoff page all uh, work as expected as well and uh, so do your V-speeds and you get the FMC pre-flight complete green light um, at the bottom too. Similar, very similar in fact to the way Heavy Division actually worked but this is all through AAU2. We've got the departures selected, we've got seven pages of routes. Really nice. Uh, it supports airway insertion as well as direct twos and I've noticed as well it allows us to do some holds uh, and it's got a VNAV which I've heard from feedback in the community works quite nicely though I haven't tried it myself. The beginning view up here is very close. I think that's the same with um, the 787-10 anyway, but I've configured one to kind of have me sat back a little bit further towards the rear here. Uh, we've got VNAV and LNAV arms. We're just going to twizzle the heading knob so we have the runway heading selected and we're going to line up and go. Elements of the flight model and actually the animations uh, are really impressive. And uh, we're going to have a little look at takeoff, see how it performs with a flat 5 departure. Fairly heavy, not massively heavy for this aircraft, though it is a 
effectively a short haul route. Okay. Alrighty, brakes off. Power set. Speed's live. 80 knots. Through 100, the nose wheel's not lifted. Last time I flew to the Dreamliner, it uh, lifted at about 100. V1. Rotate. A little bit cautious there on the departure. Positive rain. Gear up. A lot of uh, forward trim here today, but uh, it's looking good. Just trying to keep the aeroplane in trim balance a little bit, but it's a little choppy as well. And we've got LNAV, VNAV, water pilot engage. At acceleration speed now, that's automatically zipped up to 220, which is the next speed restriction, and we've got a constraint of 1,500 to 4,000 max 220 knots at this turn um, in a moment. And we'll get those flaps up as well. So I'll have a little, little look at BNAV and LNAV throughout the departure here as we commit a, uh, a right hand turn. And I've got to say actually, the, um, the takeoff, probably hesitant on my end, on the rotation, but the takeoff felt quite nice. The acceleration seemed quite reasonable as well, um, and so far it's all kind of working as expected. Leveling off at 4,000 to respect the constraint. Great to see. It's going to maintain that until uh, the next waypoint will be inbound Acorn. We'll step up to 5,000 in the SID. And ordinarily we might get vectors here through ATC. Um, we might get told to uh, climb up to 6,000 or 10,000 feet, whatever it might be. Uh, and we could just go into one of the other modes here outside of VNAV. But I'm kind of testing the VNAV to see how well it respects these constraints on the SID. Because it's important that we can actually achieve those and fly to those when especially using a, a network like BATSIM. So far then, really impressed. We just passed a, uh, a constraint allowing us to accelerate to 250 knots and the VNAV speed has immediately worked to accelerate fairly, you know, fairly gently actually to 250 knots. We're flying straight and level stood at 4000, passing Detling 29 DME where we can now step up to 5000 feet. Throttle's just gone up, not touching anything. Be now speed and climb up to 4,000. Hugely powerful climb, actually, or 4,000 foot per minute. But the airplane's already now working to level off at five. It's lost the speed a bit, though. That's something that we're going to have to be incredibly careful of on Batsim. So it might be worth using uh, speed mode instead and setting 240 knots and manually managing that but it is working to get the speed back down again. So what I've now done is given it a lot to think about. I've inserted a hold at Mayfield with a, uh, an alternate flight plan and an immediate divert. We're entering the hold at Mayfield now based on what I've put into the FMS. Having decided to divert for whatever technical reason back to Gatwick and cancel our flight to COS. And we're going to just configure the aeroplane up um, for a fairly heavy landing here at London Gatwick. But I wanted to see how it would enter and fly the hold quite dynamically. So we've now got it in LNAV mode, we're descending down to 3000 feet uh, in the hold quite casually. Vertical speed mode for the descent and managing speed 225 knots as we now enter the hold and it looks like it's got quite a neat LNAV path into uh, into that 
pattern actually. So again, this aeroplane is continuing to impress me um, with what it can do. So far, do I think it's worth downloading? Absolutely, 100% worth having a little go at this. Do I think it's VAT sim ready? Everything that I've discovered so far in the test suggests yes, massively. Uh, the AAU2 update is remarkably good with improving the 787-10 and Kuro has done an incredible job in then patching it to version 2 for his 787-8 which is what we're using today. One to go, what has the C chord so we've got 800 to go really. Yeah, so far, really good. Really good. We've got one minute holds in the uh, in the hold, one minute legs, I should say, in the holds. And you can see we've got the Route 1 active leg at the minute at the top, hold at May. Uh, and there's a little icon on the bottom left now saying exit hold. So when we're ready, we can press that. And then we're going to fly an ILS approach in a little bit of a test to see how she handles. So at the moment, monitoring this then as we go, um, having a little think about the weather, runway 26 left has got a crosswind of 5 knots and a headwind of 9 knots at Gatwick at the time of recording with live weather on QNH 1012, uh, the temperature's 18 degrees, uh, winds are actually variable 200 degrees to 270 degrees with some scattered cloud at 3900 feet. So nothing significant, it should certainly be something within the abilities of this aeroplane. And it's flying the hold wonderfully, really, really nicely. Split FMS, so on the right hand side I've gone into the approach reference page to have a little look at that and uh, we can see now configurable speeds, we've got up to flap 30, we're going to go 140 knots. We'll try flap 25 to see how it handles that kind of midpoint. Uh, and then we'll add 5 for the approach. So in the turn, what we're now going to do is step out of the hold. Exit hold. Cancel exits now armed. And we're going to trip it up a little bit more. See how it handles. Going straight into heading select instead. So heading select mode active. 2,500. And we'll go to eight, uh, 600 feet per minute rate of descent. And then we're going to work now to bring the aeroplane speed right down. joining the ILS from about 8 miles so we want the speed to be about 180 knots around there anyway through flap extension speeds now we're going to go flap 5 overhead panels all set water brake set Speed brake armed. We'll see what happens uh, for this ILS approach. Come a little wide here because I want to try and establish uh, with about 30 degree intercept maximum for the ILS. There's the runway. Lock and glide slope now armed. Speed 180, flap 5 currently. Got a bit of work to do to configure the aeroplane. But for now, we are monitoring the capture of the ILS. So, locks now active, glide slope remains armed. I'm going to set that to 3000. Lap 15. Gear down.
Heading modes now automatically switched to the runway course, 256. Really nice to see that dynamic switch. And we're going to try and decelerate the airplane to 160 till 4 DME. Lap 25 set, 160. Externally then, the wing flex is looking really nice, uh, as are the, the main wheels actually as well, with that slight kind of rotation too. Looks like glide slopes alive, active, it is. And let's set 145 knots. We'll let it stabilise and settle and then we're going to turn the auto thrust off. We'll then hand fly um, the aeroplane in for final approach. So we get an idea of the feel of the aeroplane as well. Edwin currently 24 knots but fairly stable. It's a little uncertain on the glide slope. Kind of going to about six, seven, eight hundred foot per minute rate of descent, then it's landing. Um, kind of leveling itself off. Land three is now active. Rollout and flare mode are both arms for a Cat three ILS. It is a little uncertain though, where it's bobbing about. Not unmanageable though. So with that in mind, uh, they're my throttles now. And my aeroplane. Variable winds kicking in there. So, we've got a slight crosswind now in the other direction. Now, we're going to have to be proactive here in sorting the aeroplane out because uh, we risk then being too high or too low on the ILS uh, with an element of crosswind to contend with now as well. Uh, it's kind of pointless in a way trimming the aeroplane because it's so transient. We'll be constantly trimming and re-trimming all the time. You see the, the yoke work that I've got going on at the moment. Speed and altitudes are good. A little choppy there, actually. Very, uh, very reactive. Continue. 50, 40, 30, 20. Down. A little slam of the nose wheel there. And uh, reverse green. Water brakes active. And we're decelerated through 80 knots. Water brake 3. Sixty knots. And my brakes. Touchdown then, 247 foot per minute, right on the zone actually. Um, 1.22 G, so quite nice. From the outsides, fighting the crosswinds. There's the flare. Touchdown. And reverse. Slightly different score this time, but it's never consistent, especially when you're using a replay mod, uh, it's never the exact same. Looking really nice though. And there we have it. The 
Ikaro 787-8 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. A remarkably good bit of freeware that actually I uh, haven't really used, but now we're going to be using a lot more, most definitely. Really, really good bit of work. Highly recommend it. Great fun. Flies wonderfully. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you very soon. Take care.